Hi everyone, happy Sunday. Just going to give it a couple of minutes um, to until we've got a few pe more people online. I know everybody's busy. I think it feels like there's half of us in quarantine or isolation at the moment. So I'll just wait a few minutes. What what a week it's been. Wow. Um, we have gone from, um, you know, middle of the school holidays to school's not going back to, you know, just there's just so much happening at the moment. How's everyone coping? Give me a, a, a yep or a nut in the comments below. Let me know how you're all coping. Uh, we are day 10, day 10 of isolation, I think. So my husband, who was first one to come down with COVID, he got to go to work yesterday and today. Um, and I hate to say it, but I was really, really jealous of him going to work. Um, so the girls and I are here until midnight Tuesday. Um, and I've been really surprised they've been going really well. So um, I know there are so many of you in this group who are now isolating. So many of you are starting tomorrow's eight week challenge in isolation. Some of you have got like a huge step goal in the step challenge and you're going to be running around the house um, all day long, I think, just um, to get your steps up. So I'm thinking of all of you guys. Um, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You can get through it. But we're all here for you guys. So let us know if there's anything you need. All right. Give us a hello in the comments if you're watching and you can hear me. It's always good to do a quick sound check to make sure I'm not talking to nobody. And then we'll make a start on tonight's topic. Yeah, beautiful. Good. I can see lots and lots of you in on. Hello, Rachel. Hello, Peter. Hi, Paula. Hi, Mel. Oh, Mel, we were just talking about people doing steps at home in isolation. You came to mind there, honey. Uh, hi, Beck. Hi, Chantel. Welcome, everybody. Hi, Fee. Alrighty, someone just give me a wave or a thumbs up or something to let me know that you can hear me. That would be amazing because I don't want to go into too much more detail if you can't hear me. Hi Elise, how are you going? Alright, I haven't got anyone giving me a response. Does this mean we don't have sound? Can you guys hear me at all? Okay. Someone just give me a thumbs up or a comment or something. I just need to know that you can hear me. Hi, Connie. I can see you on there. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to take that as no one can hear me. So I might have to restart this again. That's a bit annoying. Doesn't normally happen that way. All right. No one can hear me. No one watching can hear me. There's lots of you on. Hi Joe, I can see you there too. Ah, oh, beautiful. I just got a message. You can hear me, but it's not showing up. All right. I don't know why that's happening. All right. Thanks guys for your messages. Beautiful. I'll keep going. Sorry, there would be nothing worse than having to start again. I'm not sure why it's not showing up. Um, that's going to be interesting when you, oh, there we are. There we are. Beautiful. Okay. All right. So tonight's topic, um, you may have seen my picture earlier in the group today. I'm going to uh, use some different ingredients today to talk to you about one of my favorite topics that's very close to my heart, and that is actually skincare. So I haven't talked a lot about skincare in this group um, so far, but I definitely think it's time because it's something that um, it really is close to my heart because for those of you that don't know, I have suffered most of my life with really, really bad skin. So ever since I was a teenager, I would have really bad acne, um, my skin was always red all the time. I didn't feel like I had allergies or sensitivities, but I was bright red all the time. And the pimples, now it wasn't like, you know, a face covered in pimples. I was one of those people who got big, ugly zits, right? The ones you cannot miss and you cannot cover 
in makeup. Give me a yes below, guys, if this is you or you know how I'm feeling on this one. So I actually believe that skincare is a huge component when it comes to our self-confidence and for us to be feeling really good about ourselves. And we focus a lot on um, the food that we eat and the exercise that we do and we focus on mental health, but sometimes the way we look as well um, can't be managed by food and exercise and that's, that's what happens on our face. And that's why I find skincare such um, a delicate part of our ability to have self-confidence. Um, so I can honestly tell you that my um, self-esteem was really low around my skin. I would never leave the shops, not even to go for a walk. We, never leave the shops. Never leave the house or go to the shops um, without one light covering of makeup on because I was always covered in pimples and it was always really bright red. And I felt pretty ugly, to be honest. I was a grown-ass woman with zits bigger than those of the kids in my classes. And I can tell you that's pretty embarrassing. So a few years ago, a friend of mine, she's in this group, Beck, and she got me onto skincare products. And to be brutally honest, I only said yes to shut her up. Um, she was trying this new skincare line and I was at the point where nothing was working for me. And look, I tried it because she said to me, use it for two months. If you don't like it, you can send it back. Um, you get your full refund. And honestly, because it had that guarantee with it, I said yes with the full intention of returning this product. But little did I know that this was going to be the start of my obsession with good skincare. So as a result of trying those products, I became less red, my pimples cleared right up, and I felt better about myself. My skincare regime was easy. And um, I'd always been really confused by skincare routines, like you have a serum and you have a toner and you have a cleanser and then you've got creams and I could never work out what was what, so I gave up. Um, and to be honest, I think it really showed in my face as well. Um, so once I started on these with the full intention of returning them to get my money back, um, it actually had a big impact on my self-confidence because I wasn't worried anymore about covering zits on my face with makeup. Um, and so that's why I thought tonight I would do a brief demonstration with you about our skin and, um, and why being able to look after our skin and knowing the science behind the way our skin actually works as we get older is actually one facet of our self-confidence and our um, being, you know, um, having some good self-esteem is it's a really important point. So um, I'm going to share with you a few things that I've learned in the last couple of years. I'm going to share with you why your skincare efforts might actually be being wasted, where you might be wasting money, and my best tips for younger and healthier skin. Um, I can even include some links to products that I love at the end if you want me to. But we're going to start with a little visual tonight. So if you saw my picture before in the group, you'll know that I am going to use this as my demo tonight. All right, I've got my notes here because I'm not sure that I can remember it all off the top of my head. Um, so this is um, a jar full of tomatoes, sultanas and oats. And this whole thing here is representing your epidermis. So your epidermis is the outer layer of your skin, the skin that we see, the skin that we touch and that we can really feel. Uh, let's just go back up. So the top layer, this is all the top layer of skin, right? This is the layer that gets all the products put onto them. This is the layer that gets damaged by the environment. Underneath the epidermis is the dermis. So imagine that sitting right down here. This is um, way, way below in our skin. This is where all the collagen and elastin is produced and this feeds your epidermis, okay? So all of this is that top layer of skin. Think of down here like an all-you-can-eat buffet for the top layer of your skin that we see every day, all right? So down here is the all-you-can-eat buffet. It's important to know here... Um, that there is a life cycle for our skin as well. 
So when we're a bit younger, probably up to about the age of 30, that life cycle is around about 28 days. So um, a new cell is born and then it takes 28 days for it to die. So, sorry, I just um, had a moment there. So these, I would like you to think of these tomatoes down the bottom here. These tomatoes are your brand new skin cells, right? They are freshly born. They are sitting right here on top of the dermis, the all-you-can-eat buffet. They are getting all of the collagen, all of the elastin, all of the goodness right here. So that's why they are still beautifully large and plump and juicy. They're really, really, really well hydrated. You can see the difference in them. Then, as more of these skin cells are created, these older ones get pushed up the layer of our skin towards the surface and they become a bit more like sultanas. Okay, so they're not completely dry, but they've definitely, definitely lost moisture and they've started the dying process. They're losing their collagen, they're losing their elastin because they're moving further and further away from that buffet of goodness down here. They become, they start to flatten and they become sticky. All right, so that's why I've used sultanas to represent those. They're losing the moisture. And then as you can probably guess, this layer on top, which I've used with oats, is actually the top layer of your skin. The, the top layer that you feel, that you touch, and that you actually clean with your products. The oats really does represent the top layer of our skin because it is in the la it's when the skin is in the last layers of its life, the last few days of its life. You, you'll know that we um, shed skin, yeah, even without us knowing on our pillow, on our sheets, our top skin cells shed periodically. All right, so as we get older though, this cycle of regenerating skin cells actually slows down. So once we're over 30, that cycle can go from anywhere from that 28 days to 60 days, 45, 60 days. <coughs> when the cell is created, sorry, <coughs> I'm trying not to choke. <coughs> <coughs> All right. So when those skin cells are created every 28 to 30 days, we can see that these start to push up a bit more. But as we get older, this process really, really slows down. And so there becomes a buildup. Of product all the way up to here and that's why the skin at the top changes as we get older because this top layer of oatmeal is starting to get thicker and thicker and thicker because it's not shedding as much and it's not getting as many of those nutrients that collagen and the elastin from down below so there starts to become less um, tomatoes less new cells and more old cells okay because that cycle has really slowed down but we want more tomatoes, right? We want more of those brand new cells in our system. So when this starts to happen, when you're starting to, that, that process is starting to slow down, you're going to notice things like larger pores. You're going to notice rough skin, dry skin, dull skin. So your skin's not looking very shiny. It's not looking very soft. You might notice that when you put creams and serums on top of your, um, on your face, that your skin just soaks it right up and it disappears and you feel like you are using so much product for no result. Give me a yes below if you have ever had this happen to you when you're putting on your skincare. It's almost like your creams and your serums just absolutely disappear. Give me a holler below if that's you because I've got a solution for you. <laughs> yep, yeah, there's lots of yeps happening. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that happens because... Let's see it in a little experiment. I'm going to be really careful here because my laptop's underneath. So pretend this is your serums. This is all the moisture you're putting in. We're going to put moisture into our skin. Okay. Where did most of that moisture go? Did anybody notice? Where did it go? Yep, it stayed in the oats. The oats soaked most of that moisture up because the oats needs the moisture to survive, right? And that's what's happening with your skin. If that top layer of skin, that dead skin is really thick, anything you are putting on top of that 
is going to waste, all right? It's not getting down to where it needs to go. And the nutrients and the moisture aren't getting into these lower cells to help them grow and help them flourish. And that is actually where we need our products to be. We need our skincare products to be down in these layers to be making everything else work properly and to be shedding some of this layer at the top. So what does this mean for your skincare efforts? All right, firstly, your cleanser. If you are using a cream-based cleanser, you will wanna make sure that you are exfoliating once or twice a week in addition to that cleanser, all right? It'll help take those layers of dead skin off um, so that the, your products can go down into where they need to go. If you are using a cleanser that is clay-based or has salt or scrub properties in it, you should actually be fine, all right? It should be doing the job for you. But if you are not using products that have a gentle exfoliant, Take the time or get a really good product to just gently exfoliate your face once or twice a week. You'll actually start to notice a big difference over the course of a couple of weeks. Remember what I always say, guys, consistency trumps perfection. So consistently over a few weeks, you'll actually start to notice a change in your skin. Second thing, you need to ensure that you are putting products on your skin in the right order. Now, this is really, really important, okay? I'm going to read my stuff here because I always get um, a little bit nervous when I'm doing this one. So um, each of your products, so your cleanser, your toner, um, you've got serums, you've got creams, each of those products actually has a specific purpose, right? The cleanser is there to clean the skin, to get rid of the dirt, to get rid of the um, signs of the environment, all those sorts of things, and to get rid of those dead skin layers, right? It rids your skin of the impurities and paves the way for products to get further in. The second thing in your regimen should be a toner. Toners are generally liquid. They are going to go straight down. Because they're liquid, they should go straight down to here. If this top layer is very, very minimal, right, you've done that cleansing or that exfoliating process right, your toner is going to come all the way down here. The job of the toner is to nurture those brand new skin cells to keep them looking and feeling as plump as absolutely possible for as long as possible, okay? It can also help to speed up that new cell cycle. So if you're someone who is a bit older and you're starting to show the signs of aging in your skin, we wanna to start to get these skin cells, that life cycle happening quick, more quickly towards that 28 day process than towards the 60 day process, all right? That's what your toner will do. Your toner goes all the way down into here. Thirdly, so we've done a cleanser, we've done a toner. The next thing you should be putting on is a serum or a gel. The serum acts within this sultana layer, okay? So it doesn't go as far down as, as your toner will and it won't stay on top of the skin. The serums should be, should be aiming for that layer in the middle that resembles the sultana Serums, a good serum, a good hydrating serum will give that layer of skin in there enough moisture to not dry out so quickly, to not die off so quickly. It's like giving your skin a bit of a drink. Again, that will also help speed up the life cycle of your skin cell. And <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, guys, it's been a long week. I'm surprised I've got this far without passing out from um, oxygen <laughs> deprivation. Okay, so as this layer is just under the oats, if you have done well to clean that top layer of oats off, your serums will be working brilliantly to give this layer here its best job at plumping up a little bit more, all right, and not pushing through. The last one, the last lot of um, skincare that you put on, your number four, is a cream or a sunscreen. I know some people just put sunscreens on, not necessarily a moisturizer. That is for the top of the skin, okay? So those creams are meant to stay on top. They're not meant to penetrate too far into your um, epidermis, all right? And they work to um, moisturize the skin. They work to help reduce sensitivities to prevent... Um, damage from the environment. Quite often a really good um, cream will help prevent, will be a barrier for preventing allergens and insensitivities to the natural environment. So just to recap, it should be number one is a cleanser, number two is a toner, so the toner goes all the way down, 
Three are your serums to work on that slightly hydrated layer to give that a bit more moisture. And four is just creams on top. But if you use them in the wrong order, and this is quite often what happens, if you're using them in the wrong order, you're just wasting it. You might as well be throwing it in the bin. Because if you put, let's say you put a cream, you do your cleanser and then you put a cream on first, that cream is going to be sitting on this top layer here. And then you go to put a serum on, but the serum cannot get to where it needs to go because that cream has formed a barrier on the surface of your skin. So if you are putting your toner or your serum on after your cream, you're wasting your money, guys. You're actually wasting the product too. It's going to sit on top. It's going to do absolutely nothing. So make sure cleanser, toner, serums, cream. All right. I'm going to finish up tonight by giving you my five best tips for skincare and saving money and getting the most out of your products. The first one is, I should have brought them with me, don't use cotton balls or makeup pads to put your toner on. They actually soak up a lot of your product and you use more than you need to. When you're using a toner, use gauze pads, like hospital, no, be hospital grade, but you know like those um, really thin ones. Gauze pads do not soak up your product, so therefore you'll use less and make it last twice as long. Tip number two, exfoliate at least twice a week. If you want to get rid of that top layer of oats, you will now forever be known as people with skin that is oat texture, all right? So you want to rub off your oats off your face. Um, unless you have a clay-based or an exfoliating cleanser, then that's fine. Using that every day should be fine as well. Eye cream. Now, I love this one with eye cream. I've actually got two tips for those of you who use an eye cream. The first tip is use your fourth finger, your ring finger, to apply your eye cream. The reason for this is that this finger has less muscles than any other finger, so therefore it is more gentle around the eye socket. If you end up using, um, you know, particularly your pointer finger to add it, you may actually put too much pressure on your eye and you can actually cause a little bit of bruising, all right? You can actually make some of these indents worse. So use your ring finger to apply your eye cream. Now the fourth tip is when you are applying eye cream, this is one that not many people know. You want to put your eye cream out here, okay? You want to come out and around and up. Do not put your eye cream right in here or right on your lid. The reason for that is that eye cream travels. When you go to bed, um, your eye, you're lying down, your eye cream's going to travel and it's going to start to weep in this way because you're lying down. If you've ever woken up in the morning after trying a new eye cream or whatever and you've woken up with puffy eyes and they're a bit itchy and stinging, it's not necessarily because you've got an allergy to that eye cream. It may very well be that you've just put it too close. It's run into your eye while you're sleeping and now it's irritated. So fourth finger, come around the eye socket, right? And you probably go right up under the eyebrow there because it will actually travel down. And that's where you're gonna get the best results. And of course you'll go for your crow's feet if you've got some there. Okay, last tip for the night. To get the most out of your product, if you've got a tube, cut your tube in half when, it's, when you can't squeeze any more out. I know a lot of people that just throw the um, tubes out. Don't do that. Cut your tube in half, halfway along, um, and then you can scrape out your product, get the last little bits, every little bit that you can. And then you'll actually find that the top section can slip over the bottom section and you've probably got another week or two's worth of product sitting in there. So don't throw your tubes out when you can't squeeze any more out. Um, just chop it in half and reach in there and get it. Now, I know someone who tried that with toothpaste. Not the same principle. Um, it ends up being really gross and sticky, so don't try and do that with your toothpaste. Um, just your, your skincare products, especially if you're on good skincare products, you want to get every last drop out. Um, ah, yes, I did have one last tip here for you, a bonus tip. Um, just be aware that your makeup could actually be undoing all of the good work you do with good skincare. A lot of makeup products have product have ingredients in them that can cause breakouts or can cause sensitivities or can react with things in the environment that start to irritate your skin. All right. And um, 
So be careful with the skincare products that you use. If you are prone to lots of breakouts and you're on a good skincare program, um, it might be time to look at your makeup products as well. Lots of the over-the-counter stuff is just um, not really good for your skin. I know after my photo shoot back in December, um, I broke out within the next week and I know that's just from having um, a different skincare product on my face for a couple of hours. That's how um, sensitive we can all be to different makeup products. So definitely something worth considering. Um, I'm going to pause now. Does anyone have any questions that they would like me to answer about their tomatoes or their sultanas or even their oats? Um, if you've got a question, guys, pop it below while I get ready to do our self-care Sunday draw. All right, so um, I know some of you might be wondering what the hell is she talking about and how do I know all this stuff? The reason I know all this stuff is because I am actually a skincare consultant with Red and Fields. Don't worry, I'm not going to try and sell you anything tonight, okay? Tonight is purely informative. Um, but it is how I truly transformed my own skin and it is how I came to know so much about looking after, um, looking after my skin. I learned to use good quality products in the right order and my skin really did transform into something cool. Um, I do know which products my skin consistently needs to look good, so um, I make sure I stay stocked up on those. I also know which products are going to make my skin break out, so I stay away from them. Um, my skin is now super soft, it's super vibrant, it's got that glowy look, and to be honest, I don't do a morning and night routine now. I just do a morning routine because I've gone back to lazy habits. Um, but I still have amazing skin just from um, a morning routine. So I do have access to great skincare. I'm happy to share those links um, with you. I'm also very happy to answer any questions you've got about our products or the 60-day money-back guarantee that comes with these products. Um, but the goal of tonight's live was to give you information around skin because a lot of our self-confidence does come from how we look. We all know that when we're, um, we're looking, looking good and our, our skin's looking good and our body's looking good, our self-confidence goes through the roof. And I really think that overlooking skincare um, is a little bit of a, a mistake for all of us, especially those, um, I know there are lots of us in this group who prioritise um, food and fitness is certainly a big thing in this group at the moment. Um, so let's not forget about our skin. Okay, question Beck. Hi, Beck. Best trick for oily T-zone. Uh, Beck, I know you're on the products. Um, so my question would be how often are you exfoliating and uh, using the hydration serum? That would be my questions for you, lovely. So making sure that you are exfoliating at least once a week um, and using a hydrating serum can be really good for oily skin. That might be something to consider there. Uh, generally, um, T-zone can also be a hormonal thing as well. All right, so I'm going to pop a link in the description above for those that want to know more about um, these products or if you want to know more about your skin or anything like that, there's a bit of a, um, like a skincare solution tool in there as well. If you want to find out a bit more about your own skin, you can do that. Uh, Beck, not enough, I think. Yeah, it might be time to do a little bit more, babe. Um, I'm happy to message you after and have a private chat on that one. All right, I think we need to do our self-care Sunday draw and then I'm going to leave you to your Sunday night. So I'm just going to change the camera angle if I can. Here we go. Self-care Sunday today was to get creative. Lots of you did. Congratulations. Tonight's prize is a voucher to spend with one of our services on our website. Let's see who it is. Jody, congratulations, Jody. I will send you a private message, lovely lady, um, and get that voucher over to you as soon as possible. All right, tomorrow is really exciting. Tomorrow is day one of our eight week challenge. The group is going off. There are so many of you that have meal prepped already. Um, you know, you've got your crackers in containers and your oats are ready to go. And, you know, I'm just 
wow, I'm, I'm very privileged to be a part of this, this family. Those of you doing the step challenge, good luck. I know some of you are doing it in isolation, even more good luck. If you're in the step challenge and you haven't sent your steps through, make sure you do that tonight or in the morning. If you are not in either of the challenges because you've forgotten or you just haven't got around to it and you want to, it is still open, guys. These products are still, um, you know, these, these programs can be done at any time and it's not too late to join in to, to win the prizes. All right, guys, have a lovely week. Stay safe from COVID, everybody, as much as you can. Look after each other and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.